base chosen for the raid was the island of Tinian in the Marianas, 1450 miles south of Hiroshima. The date, August the 6th, 1945. Two B-29s were to fly the mission, one to drop the bomb, one to observe and record. The pilot of the bombing plane had named it Enola Gay after his mother, giving her an unexpected and perhaps unwelcome immortality. His name was Paul Tibbetts. Everything, in fact, was ready by July the 31st. The bomb had been brought in three parts, each in a different plane for safety. But the weather intervened and it was another six days before the Enola Gay took off with the first ever atomic weapon on board. Close behind came the second plane with the observers and measuring instruments. On board the second plane were three scientists from Los Alamos. One of them carried a 16mm camera with which he made this record of the flight and its result. It was Harold Agnew. We had a window about 8 inches in diameter which we could look out, but we could see the city as we came in. We had wonderful, clear, visual weather conditions. But then, just before we dropped the weapon, we had to get back to our instruments. The bomb had been christened Little Boy. It had the equivalent destructive power of 20,000 tons of TNT. The Enola Gay released it and banked sharply. The first atom bomb in the world fell through the bright August morning towards the silent city of Hiroshima. The bomb went off, the whole inside of the airplane just lit up as if someone had set off a flash bulb. And then we had to wait, and this was our big worry, is what would the blast do when the blast got to the airplane? And finally the blast did arrive. It was like being in an ash can and getting someone kicking. And then we uh, crowded to the window and uh, saw uh, this, just the whole city completely covered in smoke with this very tall mushroom cloud rising from it, which now everyone associates with a, with a nuclear weapon, but the first time we'd ever seen anything like that. The seed planted during the beautiful years in Göttingen had borne its terrible fruit. devastation, the 100,000 lives destroyed by a single bomb, are all part of history. But for Frisch and Fermi, Teller and Oppenheimer, and all the other scientists who worked for the American government, a question still remains. Had they succeeded or had they failed? People were crowding to the telephones to all the tables in town to celebrate with a good dinner. And I remember I, I felt a little bit sick even at the time to think that people uh, wanted to celebrate the fact that we just killed a hundred thousand or so. It was months, even years, before the full horror of Hiroshima became known even to those most closely involved in its destruction. At the time, it may have seemed they had solved a grandiose physics problem. Now the problem of physics has faded, but the problem of ethics remains. Looking back over 20 years, do they believe it was right or wrong to drop the atom bomb on Hiroshima? I think it was wrong. And there are two reasons. First, it prostituted science. Until then, scientists were not considered very important. But they were kind of innocent. And the second reason, I think it was morally wrong. I think it was right to drop the bombs because I believe that the dropping of these bombs uh, brought the war to a close much quicker than would have been possible otherwise. I think if people here who now debate this question had seen the preparations which we were making for evacuating wounded, the hospital preparations and everything, anticipating a, an actual landing, 
that they would realize that we actually saved lives, not only our own soldiers' lives, but the lives of the Japanese. Because had we been forced to actually attempt to occupy the islands, I think the death toll would have been tremendous. In my view, it was wrong. If we had made a demonstration, and that had failed, then I think dropping the bomb would have been justified in order to end the war. To drop it without warning was wrong. It was wrong on moral grounds, it killed me. It was wrong, although I could not see that at that time. On practical grounds, because the dropping of the bomb has, has distorted our view, has changed our whole outlook. We are not looking on the accomplishment of atomic explosives as progress. We are not looking at it as far, which can and should be used in the right way. We have started at that time to look at it as something horrible, something that should not be continued. This general trend took its very beginning, its very start, from the mistaken decision to drop the bomb. There are passionate arguments. They do not persuade me one way or the other. Uh, at the time, the alternative, the campaign of invasion, was certainly much more terrible for everyone concerned. I think that Hiroshima was far more costly in life and suffering and inhumane than it needed to have been, to have been an effective argument for ending the war. This is easy to say after the fact. I think I was shocked that this thing we'd done had killed a lot of people. But you must remember that I'd been involved with a lot of people being killed. After all, I'd come from Europe with, with Hitler's war in full, full progress. And it seemed possible to me that the overall effect might have been an economy of life. And these innocent people died, but perhaps the overall death roll was reduced. We were all aware of the fact that in one way or another, we were intervening explicitly and heavy-handedly in the course of human history. That is not for a physicist, a, a natural professional activity. 